Hey everyone, let's learn how to quickly create the embers slash floating particles slash fireflies slash whatever you want to call them. This is pretty easy to do. All we need to do is create a particle system and mess around with different settings. Also, if you want to share our work, if you want to get feedback, ask for help and meet other community members, then I have a Discord server for that and the link will be in the description. Now let's begin. So I have a default scene right here and I'm using EV, but this works both in EV and cycles. So guess the first thing we're going to do. That's right, we're going to select the default queue and we're going to delete the default queue. We can also delete the point light. And now, first thing we need is click on Ship A, Mesh, and let's create a plane. You can scale up that plane to whatever size you want. And now go to the particles right here, and then click on plus icon to create a new particle. And to stay organized, we're going to name the particle system to something like embers, or you can name it whatever you want. Now, let's set the frame start to minus 300, so that our animation already starts when we import it into a scene. We can set the end to something like 3000, and we can also set the lifetime to something like 3000 as well. But if you have a longer animation, you can increase those numbers. Now, if I press on spacebar, if, if I press on play, you can see what happens is my particles start playing. And as always, I forget to turn this on, but I'm going to turn on the screencast key so you can see what I'm clicking here. Now, if I press on play again, you can see that I have these halo objects which are falling down. Well, halos are not really objects, but as you can see, they're falling down. Now, first thing we need is to make those particles float up instead of down. So, under the particle settings, I can scroll down. I don't need the cache for now. I don't need the velocity. I can scroll down under the field weights and make sure you enable the field weights right here. You expand this and then turn on the gravity all the way to zero. Now, if I press on this reset or jump to endpoint icon, and if I press on play, you can see that my objects are going to be floating up. Now, the thing about the particles is before we bake it, they're going to be randomized and they're not going to be playing pretty well on the timeline they're going to be messy so that's why when you're testing out the particles you need to click on this jump to endpoint reset this and then play back again and un unlist until you bake it so until we bake it we need to experiment now the first step is complete we made those particles float up and another thing we want is we don't want them to be going on the straight line we want them to be random so first thing for that is we're going to go under the velocity and then play around with randomize so if i set this to something like one and if I, again, click on this jump to endpoint, you can see that they're going to be starting to rotate. But I think one is a bit too much, so I can set this to something like 0.5. I can also mess around with normal. If I turn up the normal, particles are going to go faster. So you can see what happens. If I press on reset again, as you can see, they're pretty messy. But if I press on reset and play back again, they're going to start to go up faster. But I think two is a bit too much. We can leave this at one, or we can do something like 1.2 or 1.5. And now another thing to randomize the movement is we can go under the physics and then we can turn up the Brownian slightly. So for example, 0.5 or one should be enough. If I press on play again, they're going to be randomized even more, which is, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. Now, another thing we need to do is increase the number of particles right now. It's 1000. So if I set this to something like 3000, that should be fine. But if you have a weaker PC, you can get away with a small number as well. But as you can see, 3000 looks pretty well. I can also scale up this cube even more. So something like this size should be fine. And also another thing we want to do is add an object to the particle system, because right now these are called halos. And once we render the animation, uh, they're not going to be visible. So under the particle settings, go to render. Let's uh, collapse these menus because we're not going to need them and go to the render section and then change the render as from halo to object. If we change this to object, now we need to select an object right here, which we don't have. So I'm going to go on the side somewhere over here. I'm going to click on shift, right click to bring my cursor over here. And then let's click on shift A, mesh, and let's create a circle. Now, by default, your circle might be like this. It's not going to be filled. So make sure you select this and then change the field type from nothing to angle. And this is going to fill the circle with an angle. And what an angle is basically, it's a face with more than four vertices. If you have four vertices, we have quads. And if you have less vertices, I think those are called tries. Usually when you're modeling, you want to have quads because it's a good topology. It's going to have good shading and all of that stuff. But this is not a modeling tutorial. If you want to have model modeling tutorial, let me know guys in the comments. And in the vertices section, by default, you might have this to 32, but 32 vertices might be a bit too much for the scene. So you can change it to something like 16. So if you create a circle, make sure you uh, ex, uh, expand this menu, change the vertices to 16 and change the field type to angle. Now, if you create a circle mesh or any mesh, for example, and if you click away, you're going to lose this menu. 
But what you can do is press on F9 to bring this menu temporarily, and then you can mess around with the settings right here. So keep in mind, if you created a circle and if you clicked away, you can press on F9. So if I click away, this menu is gonna disappear, but if you press on F9, you can bring up this menu again. Now, with that in mind, we created a circle. We don't need this plane. So once we create a circle, we need to mess around with the materials. But first, let's select this particle system, go under the render again, and then select this dropper, and then select this circle with this dropper. Or you can also select this, go to this menu, and select the circle. Now, if I play my animation, you can see what happens. We have a bunch of circles. Now, cool thing about this is we can customize this, and we can have a lot of control over it. So I'm going to go to the material menu so you can see the particles better. Now, if I rotate this, my particles are going to be rotated as well. If I scale this up, my circles are going to be scaled up. If I scale this down, they're going to be scaled down as well. So if you want to go control the particles, if you want to control the particle circles, you can control them using the circle. But make sure you move the circle somewhere where it's not going to be visible in the camera because we don't want to see it in the final animation. For now, let's keep this somewhere at this size. Also, if I go to the particle systems, I want to turn on rotation so that the particles are going to be rotated. And also, since we turn on the randomized under velocity and since we turn up the brownian as well, they're going to be rotated and they're going to be randomized and they're going to look pretty good. Now, the last thing we need to do is, before the last thing, select this particle again and then go under the render once again and then make sure you un uncheck this, show emitter, because we don't want to see this plane in our final animation. So if we turn this off, it's not going to be visible in the final animation and only thing you're going to see are these embers. We can also slightly rotate this, so like R, Y, rotate this slightly, but it's optional, you don't have to do that. Now, another thing we need to do is select the circle and add a material to the circle. So we can go to the material section, click on new, and name this something like embers, but you don't have to name them, I'm just keeping them, I'm just naming them to be organized. Now, I can go under the principle where it says surface, change this from principle to emission, because we want the materials to be glowing. Now change the color to whatever you want, for example, like a bright orange color. And then let's increase the strength to something like two. Now I'm inside EV and if I go into the rendered view and if I play back my animation, you can see what happens. We have a bunch of glowing particles, but they're not glowing that much. So if you want to make them glow in EV, you can turn on the bloom. As you can see, they start glowing. You can also turn on ambient occlusion, screen space reflections and motion blur to make the scene a lot better in the end. If you're using cycles, you can turn on the glare node inside the compositing. If you don't know how to do that, I have a tutorial about that, about compositing, and the link will be in the description. Now, as you can see, we're almost finished. Uh, we have like pretty cool floating particles that look pretty good, but uh, you can mess around with the colors right here, change it to something like green, red, orange. But if you want to have more random colors, and if you want to go crazier, here's what you can do. We can go to the shading workspace. We can go under in the rendered view again, because if you go to the shading, you might have this at material view. We can go to the rendered view, turn off the overlays because we're not going to need them. And then on, on next to the emission, make sure you have this uh, on object. Sometimes you might have it to work, but make sure you have this at object. And then click on Shift A, search for the color ramp, and then add a color ramp node right here. And then another node we're going to need is search for object info. Add the object info and connect the random to the factor of the color ramp and connect the color of the color ramp to the color of the emission. And now here's what we can do. Select this black color and then change it to something like fiery red and make this bright. Now we can click on plus icon, add the new colors, move this to on the left side and set this to something like yellow. Again, plus, set this to something like orange to select this white color and I can change this to something like red as well. Now, if I play my animation, you can see I have a lot of random cool looking particles slash embers slash whatever you want to call them. You can see I have a lot of colors. I can change this to any color I want. I can make this blue. I can make this green and I'm going to have a lot of random particles. So it depends what you're going for. If you're going for like a dark fantasy scene, you can have these particles. If you're going for something like a fiery scene, you might want to change this to red like i did in my animation in the bandit village you can change this to green and i can do a lot of stuff with this for now i'm going to keep this at random because it looks pretty cool i'm going to go back to the layout and the last thing we need to do before we import this anywhere before we import this in our animation we're going to go under the particle systems again go under the cache expand the cache and then bake now if i click on bake this is going to bake the simulation to any frame i have chosen so right now i have chosen from 1 to 250 frames. So this is going to bake all the particle systems from 1 to 250 frames. And they're not going to be chaotic. I don't have to press this. They're already going to be baked. They're already going to be almost rendered. 
So if I go past 250 frames, they're not going to be big. It's going to be chaotic again. And as you can see, nothing happens. So the reason why uh, it, it's doing that, because I baked the animation from 1 to 250. So if we remember, we set the number to from frame minus 300 to 3000. So if we want to end our animation to on, uh, about 3000 frames, I can set the end frame to 3000. And then I can click on delete bake. And if you want to make any more changes, you can click on delete bake, make any changes, and then you can bake again. So now this is going to bake all 3000 frames. And as you can see, if I play my animation, it's going to go all over the 3000 frames. So this is how you can easily create the beautiful floating particles slash embers. Again, whatever you want to call them, they look pretty good. If you add them to your scene, they're going to be pretty dynamic. They're going to add a lot of cool effects. Again, if you want to make this bigger, scale it up, delete bake, bake it again. And if you want to make any changes, delete the bake again, and you're good to go. But if you want to make changes like changing the size, for example, you can change the size without deleting the bake. So you can scale up this, or you can go to the render section and then turn up the object scale from here. So if I turn up the scale, you can see I can turn up the scale right here. You don't have to delete the bake for that. Also, if you want to change the materials, if I delete this material, for example, I have these black materials without any color. So you can make that change as well. But if you want to change something like the end frame, object velocity and gravity and all of that stuff, then you have to delete the bake and rebake it again. But for some of these settings like changes, changing the scale and changing the color, you don't have to delete them. Now that I have these particle settings right here, I can organize them in a collection. So if I select this particle cube, not particle cube, but particle plane, if I select this circle, I can press on M, move them in a different collection, and let's call this embers. And if I have things organized in a collection, I can click on, if I'm working on a new scene, I can click on file, append, go to the blender file, go to the collection and import those particles this way. It's more organized, more clean, and it allows you to import objects and effects pretty easily in a new scene. So this is how you can easily create a pretty cool floating particle slash embers, which works both in EV and cycles and which doesn't take too much PC energy. So if you want to ask any, any questions, again, share your work, whatever you want, you can join my Discord. We passed 200 members already. And also I mentioned that I use this effect in my animation Abandoned Village. So if you haven't seen it and if you want to watch my latest animation called Abandoned Village, then you can check it out right here and I will see you there. Thank you for watching.